How's it going? Oh, look at that. We are up. Those are geese. We are up here in Tioga County checking out the wildlife. This is the Pine Creek stretch of the, the river here and it is really awesome. We're on the Pine Creek Trail so we're gonna go down here and explore see if we can find maybe some salamanders, some newts, some millipedes. That's what we saw last year. You're gonna hear geese all over the place. So the locals that we talked to last year said this is where the most beautiful game fish are. The bass, the pike, especially the bass. Um, this is where the most beautiful bass are. They stalk this every year for the fishermen. And this is, a lot of people call it God's country. All that there are out here are a bunch of churches and a bunch of campgrounds, places to go fishing. And I think, let's see, I can kind of get them. You can kind of see in the middle of the river there are geese, there's a family of geese. There's probably a male and a female and a bunch of babies. So it looks like it's prime time to come out here for geese watching. So we'll have to keep you updated on that. Down here, a little bit, of, um, basically adjacent to the river it's like a little marshy area. There's nothing calling, there's no frogs. I don't really have my gear to get down there, but this is probably where, a spot where a lot of the frogs would come to breed. So we are going to adventure a few miles down the road and catch up with you then. It's a really nice place for geese to raise their family. I mean, you can't shoot, you can't poach, can't take frogs off of the property. This is um, a state park, so it's prohibited. So anybody seeing it, they can't get the bright idea to come out here and catch some geese or catch some frogs. like close to the New York state line and it's a lot harsher of a condition up here for weather so uh, where we are you'll see in frog week um, it actually looks like we went back in time but this is actually shot after all of the wood frog and American toad episodes in the western PA woods episode yeah the leaves are just starting to come out on the trees here I don't know if we got that on camera since it was night for most of our videos, but there was a lot more greenery, a lot more stuff out. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's just like all this water and you can't really see the water as it's running down, but it, it would be such a cool design for an enclosure to do that. You can kind of hear the water as I'm talking and it's actually all running down and it's running down into this small stream here, which is carrying it downhill. But it would just be really cool for anybody who keeps frogs and toads to create kind of like that hillside runoff for an enclosure. I don't know if you like that, but I think that would be a really cool design. It'd be nice to see fog in the morning or on the hillside, something cool in Pennsylvania and a lot of other places for that matter. But I just, I don't know, I think this is really cool be amazing to create a design like this. Um, I just don't have the animals for it or the enclosures, but anybody that is out there looking for an idea, let me see if I can back up a little. You can kind of see it's like a little hillside runoff. They got a lot of slate rocks running down, 
some plants, some greenery, moss, and then it just goes right into a water source. Probably be perfect for different dart frog keepers. These are some really cool setups, I think, with these waterfalls, if you can incorporate into your tank. A lot of animals that enjoy microclimates would really benefit from that. A lot of tree frog species would enjoy it. Different fish, um, if you know the background of where your fish are from. Uh, even ponds do well with having waterfalls established. So, um, I mean, this is a key component. It brings a lot of the cold water into the river. So it actually does help equal out the river um, at some point when the water flows in. So we are out here in Potter County. This is a northern green frog right here. This species preys on a lot of other frogs. It's probably out here looking for spring peepers, um, any small, small toads, something like that. He just hunched down, he feels threatened. But these guys will consume whatever they can fit into their mouths. You can hear the low call of pickerel frogs and pickerel frogs actually um, have a toxin that's very poisonous to even people if we touch it. It gets itchy and irritating, but these green frogs and bullfrogs have actually um, come up with a formula to be able to digest the pickerel frog. So perhaps he's out here looking for a male pickerel frog to, to pick off. Beautiful coloration on it. The northern green frog is one of the, probably one of the last to emerge and mate. They'll usually mate until August. It's not uncommon for these guys to breed twice a year, um, especially where they feel that the environment's just right. So he is in a very prime spot here to get a meal. All of these spring peepers, there's one that's bound to uh, walk in front of him at some point. But yep, the northern green frog. I'm sure we'll find a couple more of these guys. They seem to come out at night these guys wander on the road even, so very interesting species. Um, they actually make one of the better species to keep in captivity. They take well to humans, they're very bold. They're very aquatic though, one of the most aquatic frogs. So I'm not going to scare this guy anymore, but uh, just wanted to kind of show him as we're going. This frog is going to eat anything here that it wants. They don't seem to go after American toads too much, which is nice, but they will go after their own kind so just a little bit away he could become lunch for this frog and um, they eat the pickerel frog they eat the green frog anything basically put an asterisk around its name the bullfrog eats it that's the best way to describe it they're one of the most cold tolerant frogs of the Northeast but the one interesting thing is they come out early they're not necessarily breeding, they're looking for a, a meal. With that being said, the bullfrog, to have an advantage, it has to come out early. So it comes out early to hunt. They eat newts um, and all kinds of things. I've seen them eat baby bunnies. They can catch field mice pretty easy. So um, the American bullfrog is truly um, the apex predator of frogs. They eat fish, they'll eat crayfish, um, pretty much anything that they can fit into their mouth. The story is very true with the American northern green frog um, and the bullfrog. So we have a couple of these in my mom's pond, but here is another one for good measure. Here we have, this isn't a leopard slug, it's just a common slug here. I don't actually know the species. Feel free to comment if you know what the species is, it's pretty beautiful. Um, I'm not really awed by a lot of insects or mollusks, but I've started to take a liking to uh, snails and some slugs. Some are still kind of iffy, but the bigger ones are kind of cool. But we're going to let this guy slip there on his way. This might not work out too well, but we're up here at Potter County in a spot where we caught Wellsboro. We found the Venero pole where he was actually headed a year ago. And we got these guys along the road. I think there's eight and uh, two females. Two of the males are very excited. So 
we got all these guys here and we have a beautiful venero pool you can see a toad right there um, I don't see there's another one just to give you an idea as to we're actually releasing them out of a narrow pool so just trying to do our part in frog week here and help out whatever species we see tonight it happened to be the American toad a lot of them felt fell as a fatality but we are here and we are trying to make a difference so this is what frog week is all about so we're gonna release these guys and we'll record whenever they all get an opportunity to go in here and breed So this is where Wellsboro was headed. Look at that. They're all coming out. They hear their friends. That sounds really weird. <laughs> Look at that, it's a race. Oh. One of the males has gotten out here with a female. The beautiful thing is, these guys would have been roadkill had we not stepped in and brought them here. If I see one of them calling, I'll be very excited. I think one is about to. One sounds like it's kind of funny. But this is... This is the narrow pool here. Yeah. Um... You can tell it more. I'm gonna have to... There we go. Well, we brought two females and about, I'd say six males to the party. A lot of activity here. This is very exciting to see. They might actually mate right here, how they're settled in, like that. They might actually mate. We're just outside of the Venero pool. There is a beautiful, it looks like it's a green frog. Oh my, we have a lot of flies. Beautiful, beautiful looking frog here. I'm getting chewed up by these flies. Sorry, buddy. But the green frog is out in abundance. They're actually not calling tonight. They're literally looking for food. So he's not gonna be able to pick off the toads that you hear calling. What he's gonna be able to do is catch the spring peepers in the grass with the toads. So that's what he's waiting for. I mean, they're out in abundance as well. So him catching a couple. <coughs> there goes the fly. Him catching a couple. Uh, that's not necessarily gonna throw the ecosystem out of balance. I mean, honestly, it helps out because these guys are also equalizers. So we are going to get moving because of these flies. Maybe he can help us out and eat some of them. But the northern green frog, ladies and gentlemen, 